Also, my ultimate goal is to play every, I want to play all the top hoopers one-on-one. I'm coming to LA. I'm coming everywhere because that's my NBA. It's win, lose, draw. I'm coming, man. Like I'm coming. I can't wait. Like, like I can't you. wait. Devin, I'm coming, man. I'm going to tell my business. I'm going to give him a call, man. Yo, Joey. Yeah. White <laughs> Iverson, I see you, man. You blowing up. But guess when I'm coming. I'm coming, man. I can't wait, bro. <laughs> You're in the lab. There was maybe five or ten of us that played like that. Right. Out of so many people that play basketball in the city, right? Really good basketball players, don't get me wrong, but they didn't they never really had our style of play. So we got looked on, looked upon like these guys are like the bad guys, like the bad basketball players that just are just fancy. Right. So it was yeah. tough. It was tough because yeah. I always try wanted to try out for many like top. So, you know, he had got basketball, Alberta. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You got, yeah. Basketball, BC, Ontario. I tried out for these teams and destroyed the guys. Right. Like literally, but I didn't have a consistent jump shot. So what they would say was he's, he's a little fancy, but we can't pick him up because one didn't really have a consistent jump shot. Two is too flashy. But I would still destroy them. They had, they had nothing to say. I had one, I had the, so it was, it was a top 50 to destroy, destroy. I'm into top 21. Mm-hmm. You know what they said? The guy said, listen, I voted for you, but the, the rest of the, uh, the rest of the coach didn't vote for you. I'm like, Oh, like, what did they say? They had nothing to say. They just said, I never <laughs> voted for them. So I knew from then on Politics. that my career is going to be tough to play at a next level. Right. So even I went to, so no matter what I did in high school too, I destroyed my last year, high school, grade 12 season, I averaged 30 points a game, 29 to 30 points a game. But I only got two offers. Interesting. Okay. I just, just, just two offers, which was Langaro Capilano. But I had to go to Langaro because why? Because it was the closest school to my uh, house. Gotcha. So I went there for two months and then I dropped out because I wasn't really into school. I wanted to, you know, I, I you know, when you're a young age, you want more playing time. You or, started and you didn't start. Why didn't start after starting, right? Yep. And, and I dropped out and I just did street ball. I did, I did street basketball. From 17, from from the Nautic one, like I took, was really serious with it to the age of 24. Dude, from 17, when I dropped out, man, I went to Japan. I did stuff with NBA Streets Volume Volume Two, Volume NBA Streets Volume Three, MoCat. And the last NBA Streets, I all I did all that with Carmelo. Like I did the whole That's game, sick, man. the whole game. Got invited out. My first game at eight, 17, 18 years old, I played against Bone Collector. My first game. Bone Collector and Baby Shaq after the game. That's crazy. He couldn't believe, like, he was talking mad head Bone Collector. I mean, right. Because I remember we getting fluent, flew, uh, I got, we got flown in. It was me. Rory, Disaster, and Goosebumps was all three of us. Yeah. It's the rock tournament out in Albany, New York. And we had a scrimmage before the, the day before the game. And I show I was breaking guy, pop, 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 dribbling fast. And he's like, after the game, we went to the, I went to go, we're gonna go get some meat. He was in the elevator and he's like, yo, yeah, you good. You show all your moves. Now I know all your moves and now I'm gonna get you and start laughing. And baby Shaq was in the elevator and they walked out like, ha, ha, ha. Kind of like a villain. I remember yeah, that yeah. thing, man. <laughs> Right, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I know your moves now. Dude, I was like, I'm going to get this fool, man. The whole dude, I was lighting up that game. The game came, boom, Baba crossing guys up. In the fourth quarter, we matched up. Dude, we battled hard, hard. After that game, he respected me after that game. And that was the age of 17 to 18 years old, man. So young, yeah. So that's when I knew, okay, I love street ball. It was my thing. Like, I got street ball. So I started doing street ball. We did, uh, I think we did the Nautic 2 there in that time. I'm not 100 sure, but I was traveling to Japan. I did the Ball for Real tour. When the N1 broke up, I did the Ball yep. for Real tour, yep. right? I was with them for the whole summer, uh, almost the whole summer, but I got eliminated in Washington, D.C. Uh, I think I had like about 15 to 20 games in my belt. I had the most games. Even when I got, when I got eliminated, I got the most belts. Like I had the most, uh, uh, how can I say, you know, they had like every three or four states, they have the uh, elimination game. Yep. I just blew. You were collecting, yeah. I was collecting it. But the thing is, the reason why I got, the reason why I didn't, I got cut because I had to leave. I had to leave because I had a tournament. I had a one-on-one battle against True Ball in Toronto during that time. Interesting, okay. Right? So I had to leave. 
and then go play him. So I sold, I told the, the owner, I was like, listen, I got to go play this guy, but I got to come back because I already signed a contract before I did the ball for real. So okay, you can go and come back. But they didn't, the one of the other guys didn't really like it. So he cut me. It's like, listen, you can't because you missed too many games. I was like, whatever. Right. And then, but before that, I got an opportunity to go play for the national basketball team for Canada, a tryout. But I didn't end up going because, hey. because they offered me the winner of the turn, the, the ball for real yeah. was going to get $100,000. I'm like 22, 23 that time. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm like $100,000 to go to, to the national basketball team of Canada. <laughs> I'm going to go, you know what I mean? I'm going to go for the 100000 Yep. They booked my flight. They booked my flight. They got me a hotel. And I didn't even show up. I got a bad call email. I mean, email from, what's his name? Leah Rounds. Cussed me out. Right? Oh, never, hey. Hey, he, was crazy. he was mad. He was really pissed off okay. because I apparently I had a good chance to play on that team. But that was the same year when they played the exhibition in Las Vegas. They played against USA. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I do remember this. So I'm watching on the bus. Hey, that's crazy. I'm watching on the bus. Canada play USA. I'm thinking, man, I made a mistake. Like literally made a mistake. AO told me, you know what AO told me? Yo, dude, you messed up, man. Oh, <laughs> you should have gone, man. He's like, this, he's like, this stuff, streetball stuff is cool, but you ain't going to be here for a long time, man. That's where you need to be. I think I messed up, dude. But I had a feeling inside of me that oh. the streetball route was a way to go. Right. So I ended up getting eliminated. When I got eliminated, all right, I had a really good friend of mine during that time, a really good friend that was kind of like my manager, kind of my mentor a little bit, okay. told me that he got a call from N1. And N1 wants you to come play out in um, Oakland, California. Right after tour. I'm like, really? Right after tour? Like, yeah, yeah, they want you to come play. Can you fly out there? So after ball for real, okay, cool. I went that same summer and I played in the Oakland, California. I think 2007, that was the, in Oakland. We almost won. And that's what, I know there's an episode that Springs and I were going at it. And he was talking mad crap to me. It's on, it's on YouTube. I'm, I'm going to pull it up. Right. And um, so what happened after that? So yeah, he started talking mad. I was going at him hard. We battled. I was supposed to go on to it. So I, I thought I was going to go pick that game for sure. I'm like, dude, I'm going to go on to the actually get contract with M1. I didn't get a contract because they're saying because you would have got on, but you played for ball for real. Cause ball for real and one that time we're having a big, is a big clash because half the team went to do their own thing and professors stayed. Um, and some other guys silk yeah. and all of them stayed and baby Shaq. So he's like, okay, come back next year. Come back next year. We get you on in Portland. So the 2008 Portland tour, if you could pull it up, me and Springs went back at it again. And I end up doing well and end up getting on for the contract to go play at the Basketball Hall of Fame. So I end up, go so I end up going there and I did all right. The first, the first quarter, I did sick, man. Yeah. The second quarter, uh, I kind of lost a ball a little bit. Like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Silk stole the ball for me and hit three or four shots in my face. Bop, bop, bop. So he kind of got me back. But I didn't get the contract. Air Bama played well in the second half and got the contract. Got but it, okay. they're going to sign me. So that's 2008. But before that, a little bit before that, I went to go play in Nova Scotia at this all black tournament and the coaches saw me play. So they're saying now, okay, we'll give you a, 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 we'll give you a scholarship to come play. Now we got N1 saying, listen, after the tour, I know you didn't pick, get picked up, but we want to sign you. But before that, but after the game, the N1 game, some of the players said, listen, and one might not be here for a long time. They might fold. So I'm like, okay, do I still go with and one still to get a contract? Or do I go play university ball? So I made a decision. And my wife told me during that time, because my girlfriend's like, listen, street ball is not going to be there for you for a long time. Right. Go to school, get your education, and probably do, you could, you could probably play pro after that. So guess what? I chose to go play at university, St. Mary's. And I stopped playing street ball for four years, like literally done. Anything between 2008 to 2011, 12, you don't see any street ball. It's all college basketball. Yeah. Right. So after that, I did real super, man, people said, man, people said I wouldn't even last 
at, at playing CIS or U Sport now. All the stuff that you're doing, all that street ball stuff is not going to last. Those guys will D you up. They, they'll, they'll rip you. Man, I went there and smashed those cats, man. Smashed them. I combined the street ball and organized. My coach said, listen, mm-hmm. I'm going to help you with your footwork because you travel a lot off the rip. Because I, I used to split my feet a lot. Okay. The reason why refs never, never called it because I was, I'm quick. I have quick feet. So listen, that's a travel. They're going to call that here. So he taught me about footwork, like how to, you know, pump fake properly and, and, and put a lot of weight in my pivot foot so I don't move it a whole lot. Jab and cross, catching off, getting the ball off the one, two into the pull up. Perfect stuff, dude. That helped me out in the organized, man. Every year, I was leading scorer. My last year, I averaged 28.9 points per game. Broke a record, 575 points in one season. Man, all-stars, MVPs, and our team ended up doing really well. The second year, we were supposed to make it nationals, but yeah. we got, man, we got, we got snubbed. But that's on another topic we could talk about later on, <laughs> right? So I had one more year left to go play at St. Mary's. Okay. Now Javon's born. My wife's like, listen, we need money. Right. Go back to school is cool, but we need to support the, my son. I need to support my family. So I told my, my coach, like, listen, this is the situation. Like, listen, he's like, listen, we, we take care of you, right? We really want you back my last year. Plus, this is my last year to coaching. So I really want you back. And, you know, I made a decision to go play pro, man. So that's when you went to the NBL. NBL. But before that, right. you, you might not know is that I tried out for the D-League. Okay. okay. The D-League draft. You know that, that big draft pool yep. that try out? So I made, so I tried out for it. It was over 350 guys. I ended up getting picked to be in the draft pool. They only picked the, not a whole lot of people, maybe like 40 guys, 30 guys. So I got in the draft pool, but I had to do individual work. I had to do workouts for certain teams, but I can't do workouts for what 20, 20, 20 D league teams. It's right. going to talk, cost money. So I picked two teams, Austin, I think Austin, Texas or something, something Austin, I think San Antonio or then Bakersfield Jam which is in Toronto. They used to be affiliated with the Raptors. Right. So I'm going to go try out. I did super well there. The coach hit me up. Like, listen, you were going to consider you drafting you for the D-League. I'm like, damn, this is sick. Like, I'm actually going to try to, I might be on a D-League team. Yeah. So I'm sitting there waiting for the draft thing. But guess what? NBA lockout. That's two, 2011. That's that NBA lockout. So you know what happens? Everybody comes up from Jamal Tinsley's coming back. Yeah. All these guys are coming back that you never even heard of. Guys come from Europe that have a way better resume than me, no matter what I did at St. Mary's at that school, Canadian school, having this much points, it doesn't, in the coach's eye, scout's eye, it doesn't really resonate with the, um, um, the university schools, yeah. right, in the States. Mm-hmm. I, never, I didn't get drafted. So that night, man, I was so super pissed, but then I get a call. The next hour for the NBL, the uh, NBL Canada just started. Halifax Rain Man hit me up. Listen, we want to sign you. Do you want to play? We send you out next day. We'll pay you two grand a month. So two grand a month, man. At, at uh, I was 27 that time because I started late, right? Mm-hmm. So I ended school at 27. That's three years. So I'm like, listen, this is my chance. I can't wait till I'm 29 to go play pro. Mm-hmm. Let me go right now and do it. So that was my pro career. So I played. Yeah, three years in the Canadian League. I played one year at the D- Danish Basketball League where I was the leading scorer in the nation. I mean, in Denmark, MVP, All-Star. And also I've been three times in the finals in my pro career in the NBL. Three times in my career. Yeah. That's crazy. Because you're also like, I think you were like All-Star a couple times. All-Star, yeah. Like Canadian, was, Canadian of the year. Canadian yes. Of the year. I yeah. got, got two years in a row. Even university, I was uh, Canadian. Mm-hmm. Uh, all Canadian too, as well, two times in a row and uh, university too, as well. So yeah, man, that's my pro career, man. It's Six such years. a wild story of, yeah, just, it's almost like wrong place, wrong time type thing. It seems like at certain points. Yeah. Big time, man. Even so my last year was 2017. Yeah. I was like, I'm done of this man. Right. We went to the finals. I said, like, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to go to street ball. Then I get a call from Kyle Julius right? That coach for London Lightning said, Hey, listen, we want to have a team to play in Taiwan, a Canadian team. Do you want to play? I'm like, dude, for sure. I love cup? From it. Is that the Jones cup? William Jones cup. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And we ended up winning, getting gold medal done yep. that year. 
and we were smashing teams. We had a good team, man. And uh, I was like backup point guard sometimes started. Um, but it was good because of an all-star team, nobody's going to get the, that crazy amount of minutes, right? It was well balanced, but yeah, man. And I played man at a point guard position, man, that, you know, he really trusted me a lot. And, you know, just to try to help that team to get a gold medal was good, man. You know, it, it was a good feeling. I thought I was going to get some offers after that, but I don't know. I didn't have a right representation too, man. You know what I mean? I think that so many different factors that get played into this, which people don't realize. Yeah. It's just so much that goes into it. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Okay, because I, I I remember seeing the highlights yesterday. I was watching the Jones Cup stuff too, just yeah. checking out the highlights where you're playing. I'm like, man, this is like crazy. Yeah. When I was doing the the Wikipedia research and all the other stuff, <laughs> it came up as Air Bud, which is everyone's favorite movie. Oh, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Mike Two Street Ball, and there's there's two of them. I think there was like four movies online total. Yeah. I, first of all, how did you get into that? Um, I, I, I was reading their small story about how I think a coach had noticed you, um, for the air bud movie, I think. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was at a basketball camp, yeah. um, L Davis basketball camp here, the ex home globe charter. So okay. I used to go okay. him and they heard about the camp because during that time, that camp was like pretty well known. A lot of kids used to go. So they heard about the camp and they brought, they went, they went to the camp and they said, listen, we're doing this thing, this new, this movie, we want to audition, we want to film, film kid is okay. So I ended up playing well when they picked me. Like, hey, do you want to be part of this movie? I'm like, sure. So mo majority of the guys that got were on that film in the basketball part was yeah. all from that basketball camp. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And yeah. then um, did you ever want to like do acting? Like, is this something just it just randomly came up or did you actually like it? Oh, I didn't, I didn't really think about it. It just came up, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I just it just came up, man. Big time. Yeah, I, I never just all through basketball. Okay, yeah, so same. Uh, what, what was the process for like Mike too? Like, was the same thing? You were just same thing. Oh, so that that there. Oh wow, this is, that there. So, and one came to down. Escalate, professor, and That's a other guy. Escalate, wow. Vancouver. Yeah. And um, I think I got a call a little bit. A call before that, saying that we want you audition to this for this movie or something. Something happened. I think an audition, whatever. And then. I think they gave me a date to come to audition, but the game was before the audition. Okay. So Barbita Garcia and the, and the producer said, the producer asked Barbito, is there any players in LA we could get? Cause I'm shooting in Vancouver. The, uh, uh, like my two, he's like LA, man, why are you going to go to LA shooting Vancouver? You never heard of the Nautic? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what? the Nautic, man. Dude, those guys could, man, those guys could hoop, <laughs> right? He's That's like, really? crazy, yeah. So he, he contacted me or his, his whatever, his, uh, his work is contacting me to, do, uh, to go for an audition. But before the audition, we go, went to go play the N1 guys that came to town. Yeah. And the guy, there's a guy that, that was promoting here, so they, he brought them over. And it was at UBC, University of British Columbia. And it was actually a pretty good crowd. But, dude, we... Dude, we battled them till the end. The game went to overtime, and um, we actually went and won the game. So a few of the animal guys were guarding me. So they had this guy named Father Time. He was a, he was part of the TV show. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was man cooking them because I was like, this is my chance to go at these guys. Yeah. Right. I was cooking them, dude. After the game, this producer came up. Hey, yo, man, you're gonna be in the movie, man. We got a movie. You got the part. I'm like. What is this guy saying? I don't know. Like, who is this guy? And he's like, I'm from Like Mike too, man. I'm like, oh, okay. So I get the call. Oh, uh, is this Joel Haywood? I'm like, yeah. Oh, um, I want to let you know that you got the part for the um for Like Mike too. You don't have to come for audition. What? Really? Off over, you know? Okay, yeah. From that game. Just off the performance. That's crazy, man. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. You, Barbito, you Barbito yeah. sparked it though. He's the first, he's a, he started, he's, yeah. he's OG. Yeah. Exactly. A lot of people don't know about him, and you you played against all the greats, man. When it comes to like the hand one stuff, yeah, <laughs> and just like um, because people, I think they still may not understand it, but and hopefully I don't say it wrong. But basically, the Nautic was like the Canadian version of and one. Basically, yeah, That's you're right, answer, right? Just so because oh. yeah, most people may not be a what's the Nautic, but if you guys want to, man, just go go look it up on YouTube. A lot of good players, you'll see Joey on there a lot. Yeah, man. But that's what we had. Like we had look before, you know, and one was all super mainstream and stuff like. Canadians had this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Nautic. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> so, so dope, man. So 
we'll keep moving. Um, second part of the, this, uh, the podcast is all about growth. We're just talking about now, you know, you're an influencer, you're an entrepreneur, your father, you're just, you're so you're wearing so many different hats. Yeah. Right. So the first thing I want to ask you is like, do you actually classify yourself as, as an influencer? Is that how you see yourself? Uh, not really, man. I'm just being me. Just being Joey. Being me, man. Like, yep. yeah, now you see, see the stuff that I, that I put on Instagram. I've been doing that since I was 17, 18 yeah. years old. It's been a long time for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I just got a platform now and I have full control of it, you know, so what to put on, but it's basically just who I am, man. And if you want to call me influencer, that's cool. But I'm just, I just like showing my highlights and, and just, I like, you know, showing people what I do and what I do for the community and what I do for bat with basketball. Right. I think I haven't really changed, man. I, you know, now I think I have a business now and, you know, I'm starting to understand business a lot better and stuff like that, but I'm still the Joey from 17, 15 years old. I'm, I haven't changed it whatsoever. I'm just super busy now. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. I, I like that you just keep it authentic too. So yeah. with oh, the whole social media, like you said, you have, you know, the YouTube, the Twitter, the Instagram, all the main platforms you have. Plus some other Chinese stuff we'll talk about in a bit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. How do you, how do you, I always like asking the influencers this and the trainers, like, how do you handle your content creation? Is it, is it just like, do you have a team now helping you with the, to film and edit? Are you, are you bootstrapping still going, doing things as much as you can by yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got some people helping me, but it's not a hundred. It's not, they're not there all the time. All the time. Okay. Yeah. We'll have, Life, life, life hits them, right? They got school, they got work. Yeah. Enjoy the time, it's all me, man. It's all me. Like, I'm grinding away, and I, you know what I mean? Like, it's all me. I have some people helping me out. I have a guy named uh, I'm Mac David uh, from the Playgrounds. He helps me edit sometimes um, some videos on my YouTube. Um, and then I have, uh, uh, you know, my partner's uh, daughter. She helps me out with the filming, and she cuts it up a little bit, the dead plays, so I, mean, I can edit it. A lot yeah, faster. A little easier. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So she, you know, lesser time. So I get to, you know, when I get the f the footage, you know, I, I can, I work with it, but I don't, I got to always got to cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. You know what I mean? hundred yeah, percent. And I got some people that in the YouTube, I met with a YouTuber yesterday um, that has a pretty big channel. So he gave me some tips. So I always got, I got some people there to help me with tips of growing stuff, mm -hmm. but not there fully with me. Yeah. And I want that that i want that i definitely looking for that like a like a devin and you like you know you, you man you you're ride or die you know what i mean with devin you know what i mean you guys are brothers you know what i mean don't get me wrong my partner with school handles up there my brothers of course i need a, i need a navin man i need that. that's what i'm looking for i need a navin <laughs> you know <laughs> i appreciate that man it's yeah just, like um you're the second person you're like the third person to say that um someone who always says that too is uh is fillet jess he always yeah. says like hey like you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a nav and like a, a, a team, like a guy I can trust, like help on the business side. And I think that's something like a lot of influencers are missing. Yeah. Like, cause you guys already do so much and people don't understand, like you can't go play every day of your life, hours and hours. And you could train, you got to do your rehab. You got to eat, take play with the kids For and sure. back to edit videos, make thumbnails, put the content out. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, it's, man. It's tough, man. It's tough. Like, it's a blessing that Nav, uh, that Devin found you, man. It's a blessing, dude. And like, and it's so good to see. And like, man, like sometimes I'm thinking that, like, dude, I would like to have that, man. It's like, dude, you put the shoe out and you got Navin helping out with that too. God damn, <laughs> you designed that lot. Like you guys, see, that's how we, see, don't get me wrong. Like my partners are good, but they got other lives. You guys, invest, you invested in Devin, like, uh, like you guys are brothers, man. And I could tell, I could just tell by the content. I could tell by the podcast It's like, and you're not seeing it like, you know, I want mine. Yeah. You're like, how could we grow this thing together by you, him having you do the thing just skyrocket even more. You know what I mean? I know Devin appreciates that. So that's, man, what you're doing, man, it's like, okay. it's good. It's good. Yeah. And I think a lot of, like you said, influencers um, need to have people in the media like you, yeah. right? And to help out with the clothing, the shoes, the contracts. Exactly. It was good, man. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the kind words, man. It's just. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, it's always nice to hear that, especially for someone like yourself. So you have a, like I said, we're just talking about Instagram. You know, verify, nice, nice size platform. Yeah. You're always, you're growing, putting out content. I think something you post like multiple times a day. Like, there's a lot of yeah. content coming out. 
Yeah. With your platform, Joel, you know, like I said, you're like an OG compared to everyone else in this right now. What do you want to like use like your platform for like outside of just posting content, letting people see you play? Is there like a bigger picture or a bigger thing you want to be able to push and use your platform for? Oh, definitely. Um, so I, I started my clothing line a year, maybe two years ago, and I stopped yep. because I got super busy. Like okay. super busy. So I want to start selling, like start selling merchandise more, you know, like I want to show, keep showing the same stuff, but I want to try to like, you know, monetize it as much as I can. Pull it up. Yep. I think right now is a great time for me with the following I have. It's a launch that back again. So I want to launch that back again. Um, actually, I just opened my Shopify up yet two days ago. And I thought, you know, it's funny with the Shopify, I thought it was done, like canceled, like it's over. But actually my wife's like, listen, like your Shopify is actually back on. He's got to reactivate. Dude, that saved me. Deposit it. Yeah, it's perfect. Save oh. you time, headache. Yeah. Oh, big time. So, you know, so that, that was a blessing. And then, yeah, I just put out merchandise. I, I got a new training ball coming out. It's already out already. Um, and, uh, and also I want to push, start pushing district six stuff too, as well. Cause me and HC are, are pretty tight yeah, and in right. China, like, so start pushing his stuff, uh, more in my shop too, as well. So they actually do a lot of my clothing, man. Yeah. Uh, so my, let's my, talk about that. Cause like, you know, we know HCLB. I got one yeah, exactly. back there. We all, we're all close. Like it's kind of like a similar circle. It is. So I it guess is. the question I have for you is how did you first, how did you first meet them? Like, how'd you get on with them? Okay. <laughs> Stuff, man. <laughs> so I got hit up on Instagram. This girl hit me up. She's like, listen, um, I want to get trained by you. Can you come train me? I'm like, sure. Uh, can you do an individual at the school? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I was like, okay, I got, I got some time for this gym. Cause let's go. So she kept in the gym and I'm talking a little bit. She's training and we're talking during the breaks. I'm like, yeah, what school you go to? Oh, I go to McGee secondary. I'm like McGee. Really? I'm like, that's the high school I went to. She's like, oh, really? I'm, yeah. It's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, that's right. A lot of kids talk about you at the school. She's, I'm like, so I'm like, so what are you doing? I'm like, oh, nothing. I just want to get better at basketball. I love basketball. She was actually not bad. Like, she could kind of hoop a bit. Yeah. No, not bad. She can hoop. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, well, how long are you? What are you here for? I'm like, oh, I'm an exchange student from China. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, man, I always want to go to China because I watch. In the lab, remember right. the first when he went to China and did okay. his thing in the first year. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So that inspired me. I'm like, damn, China's pretty sick. They could hoop, and they always like to play in ball. That's like sick, yeah. and that does really well there. I'm like, yeah, I always want to go to China, man. I, you know, China must, must have some good basketball. I've seen some stuff. Like, yeah. She's like, do you want to go China? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go China. She's like, do you want to do a camp there? I'm like, yeah, I want to do a camp there. So okay, I'll make it happen. Dude, the girl ended up making it happen. She's in grade 11 that time. Dang, okay. In summer, that same time I met her that year, yeah. we went to China in the summertime. I did a, so she was part of a high school basketball team, girls team, that wins nationals in China all the time. She's part of that. So she oh, had wow. matches in Chong, Chongqing, Chongqing or Chengdu, one of those two places. Okay. Chengdu, okay. Yeah. And we, I ended up doing a clinic at her school. It was like 50 kids in there, man. Ended up doing another clinic. I did like four or five clinics, man. And then I did another clinic at a, uh, at a university out there, with like, like Olympic sports. I used to do a, like Olympic sports there. I stayed in a dorm there. And I did a clinic there for like two weeks. And um, that's, so that was the first, that was the first, the, the first, the first batch right there. Yeah. Then I went back again. So like, listen, we, we, you're, you, they want you to come to, uh china again in i think it was november of 2018 or something like that no 2017 2016 okay. yeah still 16 it was like november december or november i can't remember so i went up there i'm like listen i can't stay that long because i got to take care of my kids so i can't fine you could stay for two days yeah i stay for two days actually no day and a half i was there for two days i did an event for a day and a half and i left right after that then after I played pro again that last year, then she's like, listen, they want you back. Actually, I just got a hold of HC and a, and a, a street ball player out in Nanjing called B Rabbit. They want you to come out. Can you make it? I'm like, man, I have, I just finished playing pro. I just getting picked up the William Jones cup. But can you make it after the Jones cup? 
Now he could just come to China from Jones Cup, go straight to China. Mm, okay. So I ended up going after the Jones Cup, end up going straight to China to do an event with HC and B Rabbit. I think HC was the first guy, the first event, and then B Rabbit, and that was that, that was it, man. That's oh. how I met him. And we, we connected, yep. and he's like, "Listen, we could start something out here in China," and that's what and that, that was it. And after that, I kept on going to China three, four times a year because of HC. Crazy. So it's like another chapter in my life through yeah. basketball. Yeah. Traveling the world, man. People don't take it for granted, but like, that's, I feel like that was a, a huge thing for you because like, we, we both know you've been to China now, the fans, first of all, you can hoop. And not only can you hoop, it looks, it looks really good when you play, especially yeah. when you're playing on the street ball courts with the Chinese fans, thousands of people watching. Dude. The environment it's, is what you live for. Oh, dude. It's yeah. like, it's like I was already there already in my life. Like, yeah. I, I, like I already been there. And when I just go there, I feel like I was ready. Like I, if it, you know what it feels like, it feels like professional basketball NBA was, it's not for me. Right. I feel more comfort doing that because that's who I am. I'm a street ball player. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I can play organized, but I, I get that extra joy playing street ball yeah. because I have, there's no limitation. You're not going to pull me off because I missed a play. Maybe I missed a shot. You're not going to pull me off, man. I'm my own coach, right? Yeah. I'm my own assistant coach. I'm a player. You're just having you know? fun out there. Just having fun, man. And the crowd, the crowd's crazy. People don't understand that. Yeah. China, the, the, crowd the crowd in China is, is different. Yeah. Ball game. You know, you know, man. Yeah. It's it's so different. Like the whole atmosphere of being in China. And that's why, like, I, you know, I really missed it. Because we obviously couldn't go this year. So who knows, like, when we'll be able to go back. But, like, I missed that. Like, just being there on the sidelines, like, watching Dev play and whoever. And, like, people are just, like, hype. Every move is, like, a ooh and ah. And you're doing, like, 10 at a time. I, yeah, I, I, I know I, they're like, you know, they're you know, you. you know right? <laughs> Man, I want to be like, ooh, ah, ah, yeah. ah, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you hit the buck here, layup, and it's just like applause, and they want high five. They want, they, you're, it's cool because I got to live it through Dev um, yeah. and see him like uh, signing autographs and yeah. pictures and everything. People are like, it, it's, he was like a legend. So I Ooh. know when after the games, it's the same concept for you. It's like, man, like you, you know, Dev always says it's like, you know, Dev's not, we're not going to play in the NBA, but building in the lab, that's our NBA. That's, that's what, what our goal is. So th this is like your NBA. Like, it's the same thing, man. Like, mm -hmm. you're getting paid. You're traveling uh, around the world, meeting great people. Yeah, you know, man. Doing what you love. Yeah, man. It's crazy. And it's so funny because it's like we're all in the same boat, but it's just separate. But we're in the same, yeah, same, we're in the same bubble. Same yep. You know what I mean? Like you're doing over you guys thing over there. I'm doing my thing. HC, you got other, you know, got White Iverson, but we're all yeah. in that same bubble. We're all everybody's in that same bubble, man. Which yeah, is exactly. great to see. We we've, we've talked about this before, but uh, I hope one day, like when things are better, we'll actually do the official tour with you, Dev, HC, like the O, and get some of the OGs out there, Dude. and just go crazy in China, like just a crazy oh, ham. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know we'll make it happen soon. So yeah, um, I really look forward to that. So let, let's keep talking about this because yeah. you play, you hoop so much. And I, do. I honestly, I do. I'm blown away watching you hoop because you're obviously, you're older. Your body's been through a lot of stuff. You put yeah. tons of miles and minutes on, on your body. Yeah. And something I really commend you for is like, and I think it's myo detox or there's another name, yeah. for, but you, yeah. you really have put in the time and effort over the last X amount of years, which you can explain more on your body. So can you explain that? Because I'm sure that's helped you. Oh, for uh, sure. Get to where you are now in terms of increasing your longevity. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I never used to stretch a whole lot, man. Never did. Whoever, uh, yeah. whoever stretched, man. No, one did that. no coach, no trainer. <laughs> Nobody tell you to stretch. No. Get the ball, do maybe a little quick warm up. You know, you, you, you play your games sweat. and that's it. Yeah. But I felt it. I felt it in my my pro career in Denmark in the second half of the season. Um, I was I did a I did, I did a spin move into a shot and it landed funny, and I just felt like my my knees buckle, like oh this isn't feeling good. I ended up playing the whole game still, but it, it, I was out for a little bit. I was out. Right. So from that time, man, I was like, man, I gotta do something different. Like I can't. I can't be just like, and I had some tendonitis before a little bit, even before that, you know, some like jumpers knee and yep. stuff. So 
after that season, you know, I went to a lot of different physios and locally in Vancouver, they said, oh, your MCL, your ACL might be 70%, 60%. You need to do this better. But I didn't listen to them really because I knew I, I knew it, it was something else. It couldn't be my MCL, ACL, like was, was messed up. And I went to, so I ended up meeting, you know, uh, one of my really good friends right now, uh, his name is Nick Lau. He owned a place called Physio Room before they joined my detox. Got you. He's uh, in Vancouver here. So Physio Room, they listen, come, come. And I met him through basketball. I was playing open gym. Of course. He was whooping. You know, we play against each other. He's there, super nice guy. I didn't even know he owned a, a, a physio clinic. So we're talking, talking, talking. He gave a bottle to this guy, said, physio room. Physio, okay, interesting. So I go talk to him, hey, man, listen, man, I've been having some knee issues, man. Like, you have a physio? Yeah, come out, come check me out. I'm going to go check me out. He's like, listen, man, listen, you're tight as hell, dude. Like, your, your MCL, ACL is good. All that stuff is good. But I say, dude, your mobility is like crap. Like, you, you're, you need your, your hips are too tight. Your back's tight. Your glutes is tight. He's like, your core is this, is this, it's not your knee, man. It had nothing to do with your knee. It's your quads, man. Your quads are super tight because I'm, I'm a pretty fast guy. Yeah. So he said for, even for my, I, so I saw him too, but also I had a nether massage therapist too as well. He used to co coach the uh, Olympic uh, Canadian team. He said that usually a lot of fast players, like fast people in sports, mm -hmm. they're, how can I say, they, 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 they tighten up really fast. Oh, okay. like muscles tighten up has to do with their like muscle fibers, but we don't get as, as much blood flow in after recovery. So it takes a long time to recover because we're super do, 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 quick, quick, quick. So our muscles tend to tighten up quicker because we're actually using all the muscles that slower people don't get as tight because they don't have a, a lot of fast fibers. We're still making made sense. So that's why you have to really stretch and take care of your body and take a lot of massages. So during that time, man, I was doing a lot of massages right with him. Um, I used to go like two times a week just to flush my stuff because I'd never had a massage before. So all that stuff, all that stuff from 17 years old, 29, 30, 30, dude, I never had a massage to take care of my body. So I felt it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's a lot yeah. of mileage and backed up yeah, stuff. Man. Bad. Yeah. Like stuff needs just to flush out my system. 100%, yeah. So... Then after he went, I went to physio room, they've been helping out a bit. Sometimes I get some pain and stuff like that. Then when they switch over to my detox, it actually changed. It like Nick Lau, his brain changed. Like, it's like, okay, we did, we did that, but no, we got to do something else now. This is what's going to help you. Then you start teaching some certain stretches to do with my hips, get my hips and stuff like that. Mobility, dude, in two, three years, dude, I haven't felt. It's good in a long time, in a long time. It took me from the age of 29 to about 35 to feel the difference. Like literally. Like to undo. Uh, undo. Like I had to, yeah. You know what I'm talking, you, I, had to, I had to rethink, I had to change my body. Yeah. So my stretches and warm up was like 20 to 30 minutes before I get into my actual game stuff or practice stuff yeah. for myself. And after that, I started changing. Last year, I, I was like, listen, I watched Game Changers on Netflix. Like, damn, I got to be a vegan. Went cold turkey, man. My last time I ate meat was coming back from China last year. Oh, okay. I had dim sum on the plane. I'm like, that's it. No more meat. That was it. Stop eating meat. It's been almost a year now. So full I, vegan? It's been a year now. Yeah, full vegan. One year. Dude, that there even made me... I feel like right now when I play ball, I'm like I'm 18 years old, literally 18. Like the stuff that I'm doing on the court is like, holy crap. Yeah, man. Cause you still look just fast mind. and explosive. Exactly. And creativity. Like I'm coming up with new street ball yeah, moves. Your mind clear. Stuff. Yeah. Energy you know I mean? levels are up. I'm, I, and, and it's crazy when I look at animals now, it's like, I understand them. I, I didn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking to them, but I understand how they like, dude, I used to eat you. Well, I never used to eat a dog. Yeah, yeah. You're, thinking <laughs> <differently>. <laughs> you're thinking different. I've, I've yeah. heard a lot of good things about people going, you know, from our normal diet to straight vegan. Yeah. Uh, I've heard tons of benefits. I know it's probably harder because the, yeah. the more expensive lifestyle, that kind of stuff, but I think the long-term benefits are, are huge and you're seeing it. Yeah. You're seeing it every day. Um, 
are you also doing like yoga or, and is there any other like special thing that you're doing? No yoga. I ain't doing yoga. I should, I should do some yoga. <laughs> I don't do yoga. I don't yoga. Yo, I, you know what? I don't know if I'm there yet, but I'll probably get there eventually. Right now, I haven't really got no time for yoga, man. Right now. You already got a 30 minute warm up. So I know it's that's, <laughs> that's already intense. That's legit though, because you know the the boring like the warm ups are boring, right? And it's the it, boring stuff that allows you to last. Boring, man. It's that's the stuff that gets you further though than everything that's, else. So it does, man. Taking care of your body, like even watching kids now, like get get the ball and shoot around. Like, man, I used to do that, but it's not actually not good for you, man. Yeah. Not really be, building those good habits. Like if you watch NBA. What do they do when they come in the locker room, man? They get their little massage people getting ready to go, yep. right? They get the little bands out when they get out in the in the court. They do the little mobility stuff now. Yeah. They're getting the shooting, right? So it's a process, right? The whole process, yeah. Get yeah, the body man. I think he's getting on some shooting. No, man, hell no. I think LeBron can do that right now. That's out of your <laughs> mind, man. <laughs> he'd be done, man. No, he'd be he'd be done, man. That's why he spends like the one point two million or whatever he does. Like serious, he's serious about it. Exactly, man. Okay, cool. No. So let, let, let's transition. I think we got like 10, 15 minutes left. Yeah, we're going to wrap up here soon, Joe. So we're going to go to the last sections of the championship. I want to just kind of understand your why and, you know, kind of what you're trying to achieve with everything. So obviously in life, you know, you have more than one championship. You're going to have 10, 20, 100, whatever it is. Everyone's different. Sure. Um, but the first question I also want to ask you is like, you know, what is your why? Like, what are you really trying to achieve? What are you trying to build? Yeah. You know, what's the legacy you want to leave? Yeah, man. I, I, what I'm trying to build is what can I do with basketball to impact the world, right? To influence the a kid or a person, right? right? But also, how could it be the best version of myself when it comes to basketball? And I think that's why I, I, I really, in, <clears throat> I'm, that's why I, I stopped eating meat because I wanted to see at an age, can I play like this? When I'm 50, when I'm 60, can I, you know, people must Uncle Drew. Can you be the real Uncle Drew? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that's what, that's what I'm really I'm trying to do. I'm trying to okay. play the point that I could play. People might not, might agree, not agree, but I'm trying to play like this when I'm 70. Like, really? People might say I'm crazy. Yeah. But that's what, I, that's, that's what I'm willing to, to that's what I want to challenge. I want to challenge that. Challenge it, yeah. And I want to go around the world, train kids, coach kids, but also my ultimate goal is to play every, I want to play all the top hoopers one-on-one. That's why I, that's why I started street ball beat. Now right. I can't play a bunch of people because of the COVID. So I kind of keep it with the people I know. Yeah, of course. Right. But when the stuff opens, I'm coming to LA. I'm coming everywhere because that's my NBA. Right. I like it. So that, I was going to ask you one of my questions next was uh, like what, you know, why you created street ball beef, but now I get it. Street ball beef is kind of similar to how like dev has like the cage where it's like, you come in here, no rules apply. It's just, it's one-on-one, no, no edits. This is just raw gameplay. Raw game. Yeah. You guys just play to whatever. And there's, you just, that's it. Whatever happens, yeah. happens. Nothing's changing. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. And I like that you want to come out because I don't, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's many guys in Canada trying to do this or that are playing one-on-one and stuff. But I, now it makes sense why you commented to Ryan the other day. Yeah. I was out because I was, I was like, wait, what's Joey saying? I was like, okay, now yeah. I get it. <laughs> I'm coming. Like, I'm coming. Like, I'm like, be honest with you, because right now with this COVID stuff, I can't go out and play. So I got all this, like, everything stored <laughs> out. Bent up. <laughs> Bent up. And I'm watching these YouTubers one-on-one, watching Dev. Big right now. Yeah. I'm watching all these other things. These guys are going. I'm like, dude, I need a little bit of part of that. Like, I need to be in that. That I, I need to be in that. So I, that's why I call. I want to start street ball. Be here locally, like you said. Not a lot of people are really doing that yeah. in Canada. So I have something to start with here. To influence guys, especially Vancouver, man. Vancouver, sure. there's not much happening here in Vancouver. So let me start something to get not just myself on, get the next guy on. The next you know what, I'm saying? Them up. Yep, 100%. what is it? What is it here? There's nothing really here for ball. So, and I need to go down and challenge some cats. Win, lose, draw. I'm coming, man. Like I'm coming. I can't wait. Like, like I can't it. wait. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be there in LA when you pull up. I hopefully. I mean, Kobe, you know, go goes away. But I'm gonna yeah. be, I need. I need to watch that live. I'm not, yeah. to, I'm not gonna be watching those games on YouTube. You know, and guess what? I told Devin. 
yo, we yeah. need to get a one-on-one -on -one in China. I told him straight up. Yeah, no, for real, bro. Like, yeah. We're going to make it happen, man. Yeah. You got two best ball handlers, one of the best balls in the world yeah. going at it, man. Like, going. 100%. And people, and they're going to love that because you're big oh. in China, Des big, so you... You know, Dude. Clash the Titans. Yeah, it's cool. Sick. Unlimited dribbles, tricks. You try to break ankles. Just play, yeah. Oh, we playing, man. We playing. Yeah, like, cool. But you know what? I don't, I'm not seeing, people think I'm trying to like, you know, you know, start something, but no, it's just love, man, because I respect Dev's game. I respect White Iverson's game. I, I respect the Freakers game. I respect yeah, a lot of, of it just, that's just who I am. I like competitive. I like playing the game. I like playing ball, right? Win, lose, draw. Like, dude, I lost some one on ones. I played a street ball beef. Maybe one se one game series, right? But yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know what I mean? But but I've lost games. You're gonna lose some games one on one. It's tough. Some days you're gonna be hot, some days you're not gonna be you're not gonna be hot, right? But I just I just love it, man. I love playing one on one and I just can't wait till everything opens up and um Get and, back on it. You know, I could actually go down there, man, and just go 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 around the world and play people. No, I'm, I'm excited to see that back. So in terms of the King handle side and everything you're building there, what's, what do you, what do you want to achieve with that, with that side of the, of your business, your brand? Oh, definitely school of handles, man. I want to, okay. I really school want handles is your, cause I saw the Instagram page. So just for clarification, that's like your training hub for kids yeah. in Vancouver. And yes, online. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Training hub. I want to build that to the point, you know, that, you know, they have a, a, a place to come work on the game. Um, place to come play one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, you know what I mean? Just a place just to get better at basketball and learn, learn not just about basketball, man. Learn about life skills. Yeah. You know what I mean? Learn about life and, you know, and, and not quitting and, and, and keep pushing, right? So, you know, basketball is cool, right? But it's not everything, right? You got to be able to, you know, you know, um, talk to people to get a job. You yeah. got to conduct yourself in the community, you know, all that other stuff, man, it, it, you know, it's more than the game, but the game teaches you that though, too, as well. Right? Exactly. And life. Bigger than basketball. I like that you're, you're, you're making that happen with the kids. Like it's always something bigger than basketball, you know, like it is. It's, it's just it's like you was here today. It could be gone tomorrow. Who knows? Exactly. What else, what else you got going on for yourself outside of that? Exactly. Exactly. Which right. is key. Yeah, cool, man. man. Um, shoot. You know, what's funny. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, whatever X amount of podcast four or five. Yeah. And it was cool because when you, you, you came out at the beginning, it was kind of like a challenge. Like, Hey, can we finish this within an hour? Cause yeah. you, you got, you're a little busy and we knocked it out for the most part. Obviously some things are going to get missed, but we had a really good conversation. Got to go through your entire story and really start to tell us like how you kind of came up the journey and the fact that, Hey, you also didn't make the NBA just like dad, just like all these other trainers. Yeah. You're still growing. You're still building your own platform in Vancouver, which I love. You got your own brand. You're actually global because you have a clothing brand in China. Yeah, people, yeah. People, no, we don't have time to talk about it right now, but people, yeah, he does sell merch in China as well. Yes, yeah. You know? yeah. So it's, it's just so much more, man. It's, it's just cool because, like, you took basketball, used it as a tool to travel all over the world. I'm sure once COVID's done and whether we, we collab with something with Dev in China or you may go to India or wherever you're going next, yeah, the King Handles, like, story and journey is going to continue to build. And yeah. you, you know, impact different street ballers, different kids around the world to be inspired yeah. by you, especially the fact that, and I wanted to say this is like you're Canadian and there's, and I could be wrong, Joey, uh, maybe I just don't see them. Or I don't know. Yeah. But I don't think there is anyone else, or maybe that, you know, there probably is, but at the level you are like in terms of how there's R2B ball dev, all these guys, I don't yeah. see a Canadian version. I understand what you, mean. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. It, for me, that's big for us, like to have, to have you lead that, I think that doesn't give get, get enough recognition. Yeah, I pre appreciate that, man. I appreciate. Well, I don't see it like that sometimes, man. Sometimes it, it, it feels like you know what I mean. It feels like what I'm doing is like it's not enough, and maybe that's why I keep on going. It's just not yeah. enough. That's why the wheels are turning. That's why you're always trying to improve, right? Yeah, it feels like not enough. Like, yeah, I did that, but it, it's over. Like, I don't even talk about like like. What I told you, I don't even talk about that to people. Like I just, right? Yeah, I already done that, did that, and that's it. What's what's what I have to do now, right? I like it. It's a good mindset to have. Yeah. Past is past. Focus on the future and continue to build. So, mm -hmm. I'm this is what I'm gonna do, John. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it here. It was a good, solid hour of conversation. I want to thank you again for coming on the podcast, giving me some of your time. Just being able to reconnect is nice and just yeah, man. have it's this been conversation. A years man i think it's it four cool. years we first came to vancouver yeah four years ago around the camp with you guys 
Yeah. And I never saw you again. I mean, obviously through social media, but we just yeah, never yeah. saw you again. Yeah. No, right. Four years. But I know whether it's 2021 or 2022, we will connect again in person, yeah. which will be dope. Um, I'm going to leave, let you end the show. Just tell everyone where to follow you if they okay. don't. Um, and then if you want to like have a last message or a tip or anything to the listeners, a piece yeah. of advice, go ahead. Cool. All right. Yeah. So if you guys want to find me, go to my Instagram, uh, the King handles, YouTube, just type in the search King handles, Twitter King handles too, as well. And TikTok King handles. And, uh, yeah, that's all I just want to say. Just keep, you know, uh, just believe in yourself. Um, never quit. If you, you know what I mean? If you, you know, you're going to hit roadblocks in life, just rethink and just go for it again. Cause life's going to hit you hard when, if you, you know, you're feeling good, it's going to hit you hard, unexpected. And you just got to just kind of fight through it, man. Cause everybody here is, uh, you know, has an opportunity in life. Everyone, you know, everyone has a lot of opportunity in life to do great, great things, but with a lot of negativity in this world, you can be down yourself and get to hate a lot of people. So, you know, try not to don't have any hate and just all try to be positive as much as you can. I know we're humans. We're flawed at times, but you actually, we're actually good people too as well. We can be good people. So let's be positive, especially in the basketball community. It's small. Let's, 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 let's show everyone love, man. And cause it's a grind and we all need each other at some point in our life. Just like today, we uh, know mm-hmm. Navi in yeah. the lab. We all need to grow together to just not for ourselves. We need to build basketball uh, yeah, it's together, around the world, yep. around the world, man. So, and Devin, we, I'm coming, man. <laughs> I'm, coming <out laughs> I'm, gonna tell him I'm gonna give him a call, man. Yo, Joey. Yeah, White <laughs> Iverson, I see you, man. You blowing up, but guess what? I'm coming. I'm coming, man. I can't wait, bro. Honestly, I, I'm I'm super hyped for that. Also, I, I selfishly like love watching all you guys play one on one because yeah. this is great ent- entertainment. But you also just get to see who you guys are at raw value. Like how yeah. good actually are you guys? Cause social media is, it is what it is. It's social media. Oh, yeah. you when, you make you get, when you get on the court, <laughs> you get on the court, it's, it's mental, you know, it's physical. It's so, it's so much, Joe. And you know, as you play pro, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So anyways, I'm excited. If you guys just guys go follow Joey at King handles, do his yeah. OG of basketball and we'll, we'll be in touch. We'll connect with him hopefully down the road and just keep doing you know, really dope stuff. Yeah, man. And don't forget to spawn me Streetball Beef, man. Streetball Beef, up yeah. and coming, 1v1, Canada. You know what I mean? I'm coming. I can't wait. Yeah, I, I got so, so many stuff, man, because I haven't been playing a lot of... I've been playing, yeah. like, you know, training, but I just want to hoop, man. You're a hooper, <laughs> man. You're a hooper, man.